Here we go with episode three of True Sons, brought to you by the Players Lounge. Once again, once again, we are back. Going to break down another Mizzou game. Going to also look forward to our, our next opponent in Boston College. So I want to break it off with, I was right. Last, yes, yes <laughs> I, last episode, I predicted 38-0. And sure enough, my Tigers, it's something about, I got something going on with the Tigers right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm foreseeing the future. Take it how you want it, but it's looking good for me. So that means one game is correct. I also said an undefeated season, so, uh, hey, big ups to me. Big ups to me. Spoon was also <laughs> right with another shutout, which we did. Quick stat, since 2019, we are the only team who has pitched two shutouts uh, from FBS schools. So the defense is looking solid. So let's actually start right there. So, so talk to me about the defense. What do you see? What do you like? How do you continue this? It's hard to hold teams to zero points. How do you keep how do you keep it going? Well, I'm gonna pat myself on the back too for getting that getting that um that shutout predicted. Mm-hmm. But you know, just watching watching the defense, man, it seems like, you know, they're excited. They they know who they are, you know. Going mm-hmm. against the teams that they were going against, you wanna go out and be, you know, darn near perfect. And, you know, I didn't see a lot of explosive. I saw pretty good tackling. Um, it was it was a great effort. Um, I saw the kid, Corey Flagg, end up leading the team in tackles. I talked mm-hmm. about that speed last week. I think that's, that's showing up. It's pretty evident. Um, you know, the pass rush, pass rush really, really did a good job of, um, mm-hmm. you know, getting back there and making the quarterback a little uncomfortable. Ended up getting an interception on a – I see it was like a tip, tip throw that was yep. overthrown. You know, tips and overthrows, tips you got to get those. <laughs> got to get them. those. Um, and you know we're we're um we're taking advantage of our opportunities right now on defense, and I think that gives your your head coach uh, you know a good feeling about things. Even though you may not have it all figured out, and no one does this early in the season, you know if you can hang your hat on defense, mm-hmm. you know when you pack it up to go on the road. I know we're not going on the road in a while, but when you pack up, you you pack that defense and special teams first. And I got to say that you know Coach Platoon is as advertised. Um, yeah. Our defense seems to be playing at a higher level earlier in the season than it was last mm-hmm. year. Just, mm-hmm. just overall just stingy. So I'm definitely proud of that, man. Two shutouts is really big. Huge, huge. I like what you said, man, about being able to hang your hat on the defense. That's a question I kind of have for you, J. Mack, is like, one, as a coach, and two, as an offensive guy, if you're going into a game and you know your defense is, is sturdy, you know what I mean, you can, mm-hmm. you can count on them, does that adjust play calling? Does that adjust how aggressive you may or may not be? Are you looking at – Going, going for a more four downs than you typically would. Like, how does that shape your offense when the defense is performing the way we are? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, it definitely affects it. I, I think, you know, first and foremost, I think it's the opponent that you're playing, right? You, you want to know, okay, how good are they offensively, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know you have a, like you said, a sound defense, but, um, you know, how good they are offensively is going to determine kind of sometimes – you know, where I want to put – what type of situation I want to put my defense in. Like you mm-hmm. said, do I want to go forward on more fourth downs? Um, and you kind of just get a feel for the game, right? Uh, people love to talk about the analytics and all that other stuff mm-hmm. and the numbers and stuff. Uh, one thing analytics does not ever account for is, is the feel of the game. And, mm-hmm. and when you're a play caller mm-hmm. on the offense and defensive side of the ball, uh, you know, when, when it comes to, 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 to that pressure time, you know, you, you got to <laughs> hang your hat on how you feel. You know what I mean? So <laughs> – uh, yeah, but, I mean, Spoon just said it best, man. The defense is playing lights out. Uh, once again, we'll get a better test uh, this year. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this next coming week. Uh, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, when the defense is playing like that, I don't care who you're playing. Um, it's definitely something to be celebrated. Definitely, definitely. So what about offense specifically did you like? I know Luther went out early with an illness. Um We'll get into that. See, are we scared? Is, is, it, is it something serious? Will it hold yeah. them out for weeks to come? Uh, but then you have people step up. What did you see? What did you like with uh, one down? And then what are some things Brady did that you like too? Well, well, first and foremost, <laughs> I, I talked about Theo last episode, man. You did. Uh, I truly, I truly <laughs> think that Theo, Theo's got it, um, and I think he kind of, you know, put it on display, man. Uh, anytime you can go to a guy, you know, ten plus times, you know, come up with catch after catch. Uh, but it seemed to be like Theo was the guy that Brady was looking mm-hmm. for. Or sometimes the balls just fall that way, right? Yeah. But it, you, you know when you have a talent like that, um, you want to be able to try to get the ball to him as much as you can. Uh, I thought early on in the game, I thought it was a lot of quick, simple, easy stuff. 
Um, mm-hmm. I thought it got a little more complex as the game went on. Brady got into a rhythm, um, was able to to, to, to to really run the ball well with his feet. Yes. Uh, yes. I said that yeah. episode one, man. That, that, that is a, that's a weapon, right? Him, yeah. him being able to run the ball is a weapon. Um, you know, running backs again, did they thing, kind of the one-two mm-hmm. punch. Um, you know, yeah, and, and, and I'm sure they would like to have been a little more efficient on some drives and, and finish yeah. some drives in that game. But, yeah. man, you know, you put up 38 points. Um you know, and, and things are rolling. Things are going in the right direction. And like you said, um, I don't know, you know, the significant of it, uh, the significance of it. Um, mm-hmm. But three wasn't at a hundred percent, right? So right. Uh, that's that's your best play on the offensive side of the ball. So anytime you're able to still do that, come out on top. Um, those guys do the things that they did, man. You you, you celebrate it. Yeah, definitely, man. You did mention that you would love to see Brady in the run game a little bit more. Yeah. I'm not sure if you meant more design runs or not, but. From what I saw, like the scramble and getting out of the pocket when, when down the field wasn't there, you know, he scored the yep. one touchdown with the front tuck into the end zone. Yeah. Um, but that's that's huge. I, I personally like when my quarterback is willing to run. You know, yep. um, design runs are, are cool. I, I'm, I'm a little afraid about putting somebody in harm's way, but I get it. Um, mm-hmm. But when they escape the pocket, make a play, you know, with their legs, with this eight-yard gain here, but it's a first down extended drive, or in his case, touchdowns, you kind of you kind of can't game plan for it, especially if you're not. If that's not something that you expect from that guy. And you did say he's a sneaky athlete, man, a sneaky yeah. athlete, and he the, just played the, it yesterday. The thing about it is when, when there are design runs, right, for the Q, right, you pick up an extra blocker, right? You get plus that's one in the, in, the, in, the, in the run game a little bit sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like you said, what it makes it even more deadly is when you're able to escape the pocket and extend plays and then take off running with your legs, right? Mm-hmm. If the defense starts to – Having to spy you now, one of two things is happening. Either they're a little lighter in the in, in the rush in the rush, yeah. right? Because they're rushing three instead of four, mm-hmm. right? Or right coverage now is going to be a little different, right? You can't really play too high, right? If you're fine, mm-hmm. you can, but nobody really wants to do that. <clears throat> and now a lot of times you're getting single high, you're getting man to man. You kind of know what you're going to get, so it's kind of almost pick your poison, man. And then if you don't have anybody spying them, then next thing you know, you get a run for. 35, 40 yards for a touchdown because he's that type yeah. of athlete that can do that. Yeah. Well, what does that do to a defense, man? It's like I know we've probably played against some guys. I know you've definitely played against some some mobile QBs. And, like, how can that affect your defense? You know, it's third and nine, and then he scrambles and gets it. Or, you know, what I mean? feel like? You feel like you're taking care of everything. You got somebody behind the sticks, you know, third and nine, where they're having to drop mm-hmm. back and, and actually go down the field, which is a point of concern for me for a lot of quarterbacks in college football, if you can get in those downs, you, you, you think you're pretty confident with that, you know, dropping back and just coming up and making a tackle. But when you have someone elusive, you know, back there that's playing quarterback that can actually see the field and have the poise to know when to go as well as know when to, you know, move just to throw the ball, it definitely changes the defense, man, when that guy's getting down the line, getting past the line of scrimmage and, and outrunning your linebackers. That defense, defensive coordinators hate that. Yeah, quarterbacks out running linebackers. That that was always a point of a point of concern in the NFL. When I I remember, oh, he's out running linebackers. He can be my quarterback. Like, you, you can't have that. You can't have that. But with a with an athlete back there, it's going to present those problems for defenses, and it's just demoralizing because, like Mac talked about, with the spy packages and you know you know trying to change the coverage, a single high, double, you know running running a two shell back there, it just makes yeah. it a lot a lot tougher for that defensive coordinator to dial up yeah. you know something that he's he's very confident in. And then you know even if you when you got a good defense and you get no shutouts, you don't even have to get all nine yards on third and nine. And then you still have that quarterback that you exactly. can make that decision with. And a couple of things that I really saw was they even moved the quarterback around a lot. Um, I saw, you know, Brady was he, he was out at wide out a little bit. You know, they had Luther coming across. They, they're faking a, a toss to Brady and the defense just reacting to it. Yeah. And Collins um, – and and the running back number eight is just hitting it downhill. You know, you just you, you can't beat that man. When um, a quarterback is a has a knack for running and extending plays, it's going to be great for the offense. I did see the interception, which I'm not going to take you know too much you know into that because you know he was trying to make a play. He's rolling out right, but it's tough because two guys could have picked that ball. You know, he they he, he threw that ball. You know, and I love the guy. You got to you got to you got to get him out your system early, man. Get him That's what I like yeah. about it. You know, get that yeah. out against against these guys who we're playing now. But um, this week, 
it'll be a much much tougher test. You want to take care of that football because, you know, this team just scored on defense like we did last week. Um, Boston College had a chance to go out there and pick the ball off a couple times and ran one back. So you got to be careful with the football, and I think we'll be in a situation where we can get our revenge on them. Yeah. Hey, so real, real quick, to touch yeah, on what Spoon just said real quick, man. Like you just said, man, Brady out wide, the motions, the shifts, right, the different formations, man. That That's what makes – Kirby really good at what he does, man. Uh, and, and, and it's endless when you have so many different weapons. I'm sure you're going to start seeing some two running back stuff because both of those guys can play, right? Yep. You're going to see all these different personnel groupings, man. Um, and what's so crazy is they haven't played, like, they played, they've been good, but they haven't been, like, exceptional yet. And just wait till they start hitting that stride and, and, and really doing that thing on the offensive side of the ball. Man, you mentioned one thing week one about some of Luther's ability, and you said he's not just somebody who is dangerous in the passing game. Like this week, he scored on like what was it like a not really a reverse, but it was, it was like a run. You know what I'm saying? And yep. then he was like really physical at the point of contact in the end zone. Dude. Something I didn't know he possessed. You yeah. know what I mean? You saw well, you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I compared I compared him to Debo, right? I compared him to Debo yeah. when when he has the ball in his hands, but. The dude, the dude is still shifty enough to get in and out of breaks, break you at the line of scrimmage, right? Mm-hmm. Sell one way, go the other way, right? He can do all of that. So um, he's a receiver without the ball in his hands. Then when the ball gets in his hand, he has a running back mentality. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it.